in our discussion. In nature, there are four different types of forces that exist. We have the gravitational force, the electromagnetic force, we have the weak nuclear force, as well as the strong nuclear force. Now, in our discussion on the Grand Unified Theory, we said that the Grand Unified Theory is basically an attempt at unifying three of those four forces that exist in nature. That is, the Grand Unified Theory attempts to unify the electromagnetic force, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force into a single concept, a single force we call the Unified force. Now, even if the Grand Unified Theory can somehow be proven experimentally, it doesn't actually explain the entire picture because it does not incorporate the fourth and final force that exists in nature, namely the gravitational force. Now, an even bolder attempt, an even bolder theory that attempts to unify all the four forces that exist in nature, including the gravitational force, is known as string theory. Now, recall that in our discussion on fundamental particles, we said that there are three different categories for the fundamental particle. We have the quarks, we have the leptons, and we have the gauge bosons, the carriers of force. Now, in our discussion on fundamental particles, we said that a fundamental particle is basically a particle that is believed to have no internal structure. So basically, the way that we imagined our fundamental particles before string theory is as a single point in space. However, based on string theory, all the different types of fundamental particles that exist in nature are no longer considered as being point in spaces but rather are oscillating strings of energy. So if we take our atom which has the electron density, the protons and neutrons in the nucleus and we zoom in on one of those protons we get the following diagram. So we have our proton and within the proton we have three quarks. So we have the up quark, let's say, that has the color red. We have this up quark, which let's say has the color blue, and we have the down quark, which has the color green. Now, based on the string theory, if we look inside one of these quarks, what we see is an oscillating string of energy. And this oscillating string of energy is oscillating in a similar way that a standing wave will oscillate. So basically, this string of energy inside any fundamental particle, such as the quark, is oscillating with a certain specific frequency. Now, different frequency of oscillation produces the different types of atoms that exist exist in nature. So all the different types of atoms and elements such as oxygen, fluorine and so on that exist on earth are a result, at least according to the string theory, from the, uh, the different frequency of oscillations with which our energy strings vibrate. Now, a similar concept that is related to the string theory is known as supersymmetry. Now, recall from our discussion on bosons and fermions, we said that we can actually categorize all the different particles that exist in nature based on the spin. So, we have two types or two categories of particles with two different types of spins. So, we have fermions and we have bosons. So all bosons have a spin value that is equal to a whole integer value, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. And the bosons do not obey the Pauli exclusion principle. On the other hand, all fermions obey the Pauli exclusion principle and all fermions have a spin value that is equal to a half integer value. 
Now, what exactly is supersymmetry? Well, according to su uh, supersymmetry, all fermions can interact in such a way as to transform into bosons and likewise, there exist interactions that can convert our bosons into our fermions. Now, the corresponding partner to any fermion is called the supersymmetric boson and that of the boson is called the supersymmetric fermion. Now, if we couple the field of string theory and supersymmetry, we get a field known as superstring theory. So, based on the mathematics of superstring theory and if this theory is actually correct, we see that our world actually consists of not four dimensions but 11 dimensions. Now, 10 of these dimensions are spatial dimensions and the 11th dimension is the dimension of time. So basically the reason we can only see three spatial dimensions and not all ten is because the other seven dimensions, spatial dimensions, are basically coiled up into very very small balls that we cannot actually see. So as we discussed earlier, supersymmetry basically means we can take any fermion and transform it into the supersymmetric boson. So if we take the electron, if we convert that to the supersymmetric boson, that produces something called the selectron. If we take the quark, that forms the squark. And likewise, if we take a boson, such as a gluon or photon, we can transform them to their supersymmetric fermion partner and this is known as supersymmetry. Now the problem with supersymmetry is these types of particles haven't actually been observed experimentally. No matter how much we try using colliders or high energy particle accelerators, we cannot actually form or observe experimentally these types of particles. So, once again, what exactly is the superstring theory? The superstring theory is a theory that incorporates two theories, the string theory and supersymmetry. Supersymmetry tells us that if we take any fermion, there exist interactions and ways in nature to convert uh, fermions to bosons and bosons back to fermions. And what the string theory tells us is if we examine in our fundamental particles, the gauge bosons such as photons and gluons and W and Z uh, bosons as well as the Higgs boson particle, and if we examine leptons and quarks, all these fundamental particles actually themselves consist of oscillating or vibrating strings of energy that oscillate in a similar way that standing waves oscillate. And they oscillate at certain specific frequencies and those certain specific frequencies basically correspond to that particular atom. And the different atoms that we observe on Earth are a result of the different frequency of oscillations of our strings of energy.